morning. I am so happy to see you. I am so happy to be back in this place, and I'm so happy to see you as well. So March 15th, 2020, that was five months and 22 days ago. And that was the last time that we gathered together for worship here in this place. And in the 175 days since March 15th, 2020, we have discovered that church is much more than the building. Church is us, and church is present whenever we are present, sharing God's grace, God's love, and God's mercy with others. Church is us. Church is whenever people are fed, clothed, nourished, and cared for. And you have been doing that in these past 175 days, and you will continue to do that in the days and days that are yet to come. But I have to admit that there is something very special when we do gather together in person, and we are able to see one another face to face, even if it's more like eye to eye right now. And I'm so happy that this day has finally arrived, and I'm also so happy for those who are able to continue connecting with us online. And you'll see that things look a little bit different this morning. I bet you've never worn a mask to church before, and it's been okay to do so. And our space definitely looks very different. We are six feet apart. Jody and I were out with the measuring tape, ensuring that physical distancing was able to be maintained. Our worship service will also look a little bit different this morning. We will have music, but we will not be allowed to sing along, although you at home can sing your hearts out. But those of us here at our church home, um, maybe you could just hum, or as John said before, sing in your heart. <laughs> we will also not be sharing a bulletin, an order of service, hymn books, Bibles, those are not allowed to be shared. Um, we also won't have any responsive readings, and when it does come to the time when we share together the Lord's Prayer, if you could just say that quietly into your mask. And our worship services are required to be a little bit shorter than normal. Uh, the authorities, though, in the, those in the know about these things, have requested that worship services last no longer than about 45 minutes. You'll also notice that the offering plates are located on a table at the back. Uh, they will not be passed throughout the worship service. Of course, we're trying to minimize contact, um, but you are invited to leave your gift to Knox and to this ministry in the offering plates as you leave our service this morning. And we're not allowed to have coffee time or fellowship after the service, but we are allowed to continue conversation outside in the parking lot uh, keeping your masks on and maintaining the six feet of distance. And then when the service does come to an end, those who are seated at the back of the sanctuary are asked to exit first and, and exit right out of the building, if you don't mind, and then the rest of us will follow afterwards. So it does look different, but we are together. And thank God for that. There is a phrase that many of us have heard over and over since the start of this pandemic, and the phrase is new normal. And if you think about it, those words put together are actually an oxymoron. If something is new, it's not normal. And if something is normal, then it's not new. So those two words really shouldn't be going together. Yet, here we are, gathered for worship, which is normal, but doing so in a new way. We go grocery shopping in a way that is, that is normal, but we do it in a way that is very, very new. Our children will soon be going back to school, and that is normal, but they will be doing so in a way that is very new. So we are living an oxymoron. We are living in a new normal. So as we prepare to worship God in this new normal, I invite you to join with me in prayer. Let's pray together. God, who is made visible through grace and goodness, through compassion and justice, we thank you for this space and for this opportunity to gather in this space after such a very long time apart. We also thank you for those who worship with us from home 
and we marvel at the technology that makes this possible. Thank you for the way we have encountered your presence over these past six months. And thank you for the opportunities that you have given us to be your presence for others. Help us to continue caring for one another and for our community, and also taking time to care for ourselves in these very strange times, these oxymoronic <coughs> times. And guide us this morning as we hear ancient words and find relevance in them for a new day. Calm our minds, ease our worries, and help us to sense your presence among us. And we pray this, uniting our voices together with the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The book of Lamentations in the Old Testament contains these words. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So now we're going to join together. Whoa. Sorry. And listening to this hymn that is based on those words from Lamentations. And I just wanted to explain that Paul is not with us this morning. So we do have music on the video. And Paul is recovering at home after having some day surgery on Friday, and he's doing very well. So we'll listen now to the wonderful hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Now we're going to do something that is normal in a new way. So it's the children's time, which is normal for us to do. But again, we're living out an oxymoron, so we're doing it in a new way. And we're starting today a new theme in our children's ministry, ministry, which is based on the Beatitudes. And all of the families have received information that will help guide them through this. So they have been given activities that they can do at home that will supplement what we talk about here on Sundays. And we're also going to have monthly gatherings that I'll talk about in a little bit. But this new ministry, the new children's ministry, that we are embarking on today is based on the Beatitudes, which is a word for, word for blessing or happiness. And many of us right now may not be feeling very happy or may not be feeling very blessed, especially in these past months. Hopefully we're feeling blessed today because we're able to worship God and be in one another's presence. But the past few months have definitely um, been very challenging for very many of us. Some of us have been feeling isolated and lonely. Uh, even if we've been able to see other people, everything is just so different. And that's resulted in a lot of anxiety and worry. And then a new school year is just a few days away. And so our children who are going back to school and the families that are preparing for that, they are probably also feeling anxious and a little bit out of sorts, uh, just worried about what the future might hold and what might lie ahead for them. But in the teachings of Jesus that are called the Beatitudes, Jesus describes those who are blessed and people that we might not think as being blessed are included in that list. So in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus describes, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. So some of those attributes, being hungry and thirsty in a physical sense, being poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, perhaps are not people that we would assume are blessed or are happy, the other way that that word has been interpreted. Those are not things that we would think would bring happiness or bring blessing. But I think what Jesus is teaching here through this scripture that we call the Beatitudes is that everybody is included. Everybody is part of this great blessing that comes from God. And we have the opportunity to extend that blessing to others. It really is a message of abundance, that there is enough if only we would share what we have with others. Only if we would share out of that abundance with those who have less. So what Jesus is teaching here is that we are all included, we are all loved, we are our part of this great blessing, but we also have a role to play in extending that blessing to others. So there is enough food in our world, if only we would share and maybe take better care of it, not throw out so much food at one time. There is enough water, if only we would work together to clean it and distribute it. There is enough love, if only we would share it from us to others in order to bring about blessing. So I guess we all are blessed. We all are included in that list of attributes of those who are blessed as described in the Beatitudes. When we remember to share our food, our water, and our love. So I encourage each one of us, and especially those children who are returning to school, whether it is in person or online, to find opportunities to share, to find opportunities to be a blessing to others. Use your words to bless others, use your attitudes and your actions to bless others, and you could also use your mask to bless others. I thought, wouldn't it be fun, and I don't know if you can see that at home, to paint, I used a little bit of fabric paint to just paint a little happy face on here, but a little message of encouragement. Uh, we all have to wear these things now, and especially our children going back to school, wearing them for the entire day. What a great opportunity to give another person a blessing through our words, through our actions, 
and even through our masks. So as Jesus gave blessing, talked about those who are blessed, I'd like to share a blessing with you as well. So let's join together for prayer. Loving God, we praise you for your abundance, abundant love, abundant belonging, abundant hope, abundant life for every child of yours. Please help us to break down the systems around us which cause harm and to bring your kingdom of love and equality to our world today, in our schools, online or in person, in our families, in our communities. Help each one of us know that we are blessed by your love and help us to be a blessing to others. Amen. So all the families who receive our emails and who are part of our wider Knox family have received information through our weekly email with a link. And the link will take you to a family blessings page. And there are activities, intergenerational activities you can do with your families uh, on that page. And also included in that link is um, an activity page. So I hope you have fun uh, dealing with those and tuning in every week because the story that we share, the message that we share on Sunday will make sense and will sort of fulfill what our families will be working on at home. And you know, everyone who's on that email gets that link, so you don't have to be a certain age to do that. So any one of you are welcome to uh, participate in our, our new normal children's ministry as we go forward. And at this time, I call upon Reverend Dr. Jim Thompson to share with us our scripture reading. feel greatly blessed in being able to uh, suddenly appear full-faced uh, in front of a group of people. Our lesson uh, this morning is to be found in the uh, Epistle to the Colossians, the third chapter, and reading from the uh, 12th verse to the 17th. Put on, the apostle writes, Put on then garments that suit God's chosen and beloved people, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Be tolerant with one another and forgiving. If any of you has cause for, for complaint, you must forgive as the Lord forgave you. Finally, to bind everything together and complete the whole, there must be love. Let Christ's peace be arbiter in your decisions, the peace to which you were called as members of a single body. Always be thankful. Let the gospel of Christ dwell among you in all its richness. Teach and instruct one another with all the wisdom it gives you. With psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, sing from the heart in gratitude to God. Let every word and action, everything you do, be in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks through him to God the Father. Amen. Thank you. So when I can't find my husband, John, I have learned to check the basement because chances are he is working on his ever-growing train set. And I think he's really doing an amazing job. He's incorporating local lands, landscapes and sites into his scenery, carving out the pieces. He uses this special dense foam and then he paints them. And little, little tiny pieces and also bigger sceneries. And I told him that we should really find a way for him to display this at a local train show whenever we're able and allowed to do that again. But he warned me that we might not ever be able to get the train set out of the basement because it might not fit through the doorway. It's just sort of expanding. And while John really enjoys working on the train set, he's been facing some challenges lately. 
and something arrived in the mail this past week to help him with those challenges. And it's this. You'll see two magnifying glasses, not just one, but two magnifying glasses with a light attached. Also with these little holders that you can put the smaller pieces on and then work on them and paint them and carve them. And so he had no problem seeing the big picture. Uh, he, he enjoyed working on these sceneries and, and seeing how it would all come together. That was not a problem. The problem came when he was trying to zero in on the details, when he was trying to work on the carving and the painting of these particularly tiny pieces that really fulfill this scenery. And, and I think there's some similarities there because we are at a time in church history when we may be needing a little help, just like John needed some help to focus in, to zero in on the details. We too, as a church, as a people, may be needing a little bit of help with that. We can see the big picture as a church, 2,000 years of following the teachings of Jesus, but when it comes down to the details, the details of how we do what we do and why we do it, we may need, need help resetting our focus. And so that has been the focus of our new sermon series that we started last week called Resetting Our Focus. And last week, if you watched online, uh, we talked about this idea of being on the cusp of a great awakening in our culture and in the church because we are waking up. We are waking up to the injustices, the unbalance, the inequality that surrounds us in our communities and within our wider world. And this week I'd like to talk about why it is us, why it is you and me who have the task of leading the way forward into this great awakening. Leading the way forward when it comes to bringing about justice, equality, and balance. And that passage from the letter to the Colossians that Reverend Dr. Thompson read for us this morning describes what it looks like when the teachings of Jesus are lived out. It even talks about this analogy of, of putting them on like a new set of clothing. Clothe yourselves with these following attributes. And that is actually an issue of identity. Our identity. Discovering who we are. There's a scene in the Disney film, The Lion King, when the key character, Simba, really has an identity crisis. His father dies tragically, and Simba needs to live the rest of his life with this deep secret. And the deep secret is that he played a role in his father's death, although it was the bad guy, Scar, who orchestrated the entire thing. But Simba is left with this deep guilt and he's so overcome by this that he has forgotten who he is. He's forgotten his identity. He has forgotten that he is the son of a king, the Lion King. And he has forgotten how to live out that identity. And it takes a rather annoying but wise talking mandrel named Rafiki. And his name, Rafiki, actually means friend in Swahili, to remind Simba of his identity. And in a particularly moving scene in the film, Rafiki says to Simba, remember who you are. And as we work at resetting our focus as a church and as individuals, that phrase, that question, that statement might be just as valid for us today. Our concept of self-identity may have been put into question over these past many months of the pandemic, with I'm sure many more yet to come, especially when it comes to our faith, our value, and our purpose. So Rafiki's words to Simba may be words we need to hear today. Remember who you are. And I could add, remember whose you are. Especially when we set about resetting our focus, discovering who we are called to be in this new normal. And that identity becomes clear, clearer, becomes 
into focus through those words from the letter to the Colossians. And I invite you to hear those words again. I'm going to read a portion from the message paraphrase version of the Bible. So chosen by God for this new life, and we could say this new normal life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even-tempered. Content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment, it states. Never be without it. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with one another. None of this going off and doing your own thing and cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing, sing your hearts out to God, but not here in this space, at home. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master, Jesus, thanking God the Father, every step of the way. It's sort of a colloquialism way of writing that uh, Eugene Peterson has in the message. And we are in this process of resetting our focus, trying to figure this out in this new normal, why we do what we do and how we do it as a church and as individuals. And so I think this passage is like John's magnifying glass. It helps us to take that big picture and zero in on it, helping us to reset our focus and figure out what it does look like when we remember who we are, when we remember whose we are. And our identity is rooted in love, love that is expressed through action. Love that is expressed through compassion, kindness, humility, self-control, discipline, quiet strength, and forgiveness, to use those words of Colossians. That defines who we are. That is our identity. And I believe that that is truly what our world needs, what our families need, what our schools need, what our community needs, especially now, especially in this time of new normal, this oxymoronic time. Love expressed through compassion. Love that cares for others in practical and faithful ways. George Markow shows us what that big picture love looks like when we zero in and focus in on it through our magnifying glass. And you may have heard about George Markow in the news this past week. He is that 99-year-old gentleman who has spent the past four months walking around his senior's residence in Newmarket. He has completed walking 1,500 laps, which equates to 100 kilometers. And he has raised over $47,000 for COVID-19 research. So that is what big picture love looks like when we focus in, when we zero in on it. Ten-year-old Lily Ichikawa has also shown, up, shown us what that big picture love looks like when we focus in, when we zero in on it. And Lily is from Banff, Alberta. She is ten years old, and when she found out that seniors living in a nearby residence were feeling especially isolated and alone during this pandemic, she wanted to do something to help them know that they were not forgotten. So she went to that senior's residence with a stack of origami paper, and she went about crafting hundreds of origami butterflies, fish, frogs, flowers, sticking them on the windows outside that residence, creating a paper garden as an expression of love, as an expression of that big picture love, what it looks like when we focus in, when we zero in on it. We have an opportunity to do the same. We have an opportunity to show what that 
big picture love looks like when we zero in on it using those words from the letter to the Colossians. We have an opportunity to remember who we are, whose we are, and then to live into that identity. Now, maybe not walking around our homes 1,500 times, but perhaps visiting others at their home for front porch visits, parking lot door, um, driveway conversations, backyard chats. Maybe not creating hundreds of origami flowers, frogs, and fish, because mine would definitely not look like hers, but perhaps we could create cards of encouragement, masks of encouragement that we could mail, that we could share whenever we see another person on the street, in the store. So we're reminded to remember who we are. We're reminded and we're encouraged to live into that identity as expressed through those attributes in Colossians. To reset our focus, becoming living expressions of God's compassion, God's humility, forgiveness, and especially love. Love that is put into action. Let's pray together now. Over these months of the pandemic, everything has changed. What was once familiar is now so different. And for some of us, we may be struggling with our sense of identity, purpose, and value. Help us, God, to remember who we are. We are yours. And help us to live into that identity through compassion, through humility, through forgiveness, and especially through love. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I invite you now to listen to the wonderful hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. Say. Mm -hmm. 
join together for the prayers of the people and there are a few uh, joys and sorrows that I'd like to share with you. We will continue to pray for Paul, our organist, as he recovers from day surgery. We also pray for those who are in hospital and those who are recently home from hospital and are recovering. We also pray for those who are celebrating and Norma Buster has one of those big zero or five birthdays coming up next week and Norma's going to be 95 years old. How wonderful and blessed we are that you are here with us today, Norma. And, uh, and we are, I know we'll have some opportunities to extend our birthday wishes to you next week, but thank you for being a blessing to each one of us. Let's join together now for the prayers of the people. God of justice and grace, on this Sunday when many churches are meeting again in person, some are waiting and some are questioning. We thank you that we live in a time when we can gather and when we can worship in a variety of different ways. Thank you for this opportunity to reflect on why and how we gather and why and how we live as your church. God, I'm so thankful for the leaders here at Knox, our elders and board members who have guided us so well in these past months and continue to guide us during these ever-changing times with wisdom and with faith. There is so much that is uncertain about the coming days. As children return to school, as daycares begin to reopen and as families struggle with difficult decisions, give us calm in the turmoil, give us peace in the confusion, and remind us of your love, which forever surrounds us. God, we pray for all who are in positions of leadership in our school boards, in our corporations, in small businesses, and in our political arenas. Help all of their decisions be motivated by compassion and justice, those attributes from Colossians. We also pray for all places and people whose lives have been interrupted by violence, hunger, unemployment, disease, and unrest. We pray for those in our families, our community, and in this congregation who are facing health challenges, who are dealing with difficult decisions, and who are feeling alone. Hear each one of our prayers as we bring them to you now during this time of silence. Give us opportunities to be your peacemakers, your comforters, and your voices of justice as we work together to bring about that day when all your children will know they are blessed. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are God's beloved children, so remember who you are and live into that identity, being living representations of God's compassion, humility, forgiveness, and love. And do so knowing that God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, is walking this journey with you and is giving you peace. <laughs>